Hi group, this is Jen Shepard. I run my private practice out of the west side of Cleveland and my I am a fellow. I finished fellowship in 2008 and then have gone on to study with Gail and the Brawl Institute and uh, treat a beautiful combination of FMT and visceral manipulation. Um, I've done all of Diane Lee's work. So it's a beautiful blend of lots of things. And what I wanna share on my Victory Friday is when your patient comes in, busts through the door and gives you a big hug and says, oh my gosh, thank you so much. So this patient I'd seen, uh, she's a woman, she's about to turn 60, but I treated her for autonomic nervous system is her primary, but uh, she came to see me and was for, referred to me from uh, our functional medicine doc for SIBO, which um, there is a significant ANS component, uh, emotional trauma component, vagus sympathetic parasympathetic component, to SIBO as well. So, but she referred to me her son and her son is 23 years old, diagnosed with autism early on. I'm not sure what exactly what age, diagnosed with pandas around age 12, um, ADHD, anxiety, many, many things. And her biggest concern and stress in her life, which is affecting her health is anger, rage, um, oppositional defiance uh, in her son. So he works part-time as a checkout person at one of the local stores and takes classes at the community college, but he is home with her. So as with all my patients, let's see what we find. Let's see what comes in um, as far as symptom wise and what we feel with our hands as our hands are our best tool. So I have many, many intakes and uh, on his intake, I use an intake through functional medicine, not a lot scored high on him. Again, he scored himself. And uh, I use another intake that Gail teaches us in our concussion class that various symptoms correlate with various lobes and areas in the brain. So for him, uh, primary for him was parietal, secondary was temporal as he scored on that. So I don't look at that before I feel him because I don't want to be biased. Uh, what else showed up for him? I have one more intake that I have for him and uh, also showed a lot of GI. And again, for the pandas, conventional treatment has been antibiotics for a long time. So he's been on an antibiotic for a long time. So his concerns, um, some acid reflux, gas, bloating, con constipation, and headaches, migraines, TMJ, anxiety, ADHD, acne, sensitive skin. So many, not major in his eyes, but enough to score on these intakes. So as I look at him, what was most intriguing to me, and I can't show you his photo just yet when we share this later perhaps, but I, what was most remarkable about him was his head position. And I'm pulling this up bigger so I can describe it to you. And as I look at him again, significant asymmetry of the eyes, the left eye really is dropped. The left ear is really dropped. That left shoulder has come up. So as we look at these asymmetries, all right, what's going on deeper perhaps in the visceral system? What is perhaps compensatory? What's going on through there? Why are we seeing these structural things? So very quickly as we notice what's going on at the cranium, what's going on inside of the cranium to create such asymmetry in his posture. I also, um, his mom had shared that he has been in and out of vision therapy for a long time. So I wanted to, and in my patients with a concussion, I do look at tracking. I look at convergence, divergence, and just how that smooth pursuit side to side and up and down. And he, as I pull his chart up here for you, is really struggled. So despite lots of vision therapy, he still struggled with, he did well with convergence divergence, but he struggled with smooth pursuit to the right, difficulty end range looking up, noticed on the left eye, going down, he had more difficulty with the right eye. So thinking, all right, what's going on in the cranium? What's happened to the brain? As we know, the eyes are part of the brain. Diving further back into history, Hey, how was your birth? How was delivery? So mom said it was, uh, she had a long labor and there was lots of pushing. And then he, she, both of them ended up with an emergency C-section and a lot of stress during pregnancy prior to. So when we think about 
here's what we're feeling in the cranium. And I'll tell you in just a little bit what I felt in the cranium. Again, here is this prolonged labor, compression, compression. First off, how's positioning in the womb? And then compression, 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 especially in the womb. And then perhaps wherever, however, he was positioned against a hard sacrum or perhaps the bony aspect of the pelvis and how that impact and pressure over a longer period of time has affected the cranial bones, thus affected the brain inside. So uh, general listening. So I do, I use listening with all my patients because it truly, truly helps guide me where I need to go. And I'm always going in and out of posture, FMT, listening. So I'm playing in and out of all of these, all of our paradigms in order to help me make the best hypothesis to treat the right thing at the right time. How does it correlate with, with the patient's symptoms? So general listening actually took me right to the gut first. I really thought we were gonna end up in the brain first being, here's what I saw cranially. So we did end up in the gut first. And uh, prior to going to the gut, I used cranial sacral rhythm. So Greg and fellowship way back in 2007, 2008, we started to explore a little bit of cranial sacral rhythm. And again, we go into that in the visceral world and the cranial sacral world. That's not so much of my world, but cranial sacral rhythm for him, he didn't have much of anything. So as we think about the ability for the brain to to have to have give to expand contract for fluids to come in go out the vitality of the overall nervous system the balance of the nervous system this poor kid didn't have much of anything i'm sitting here waiting for the rhythm come on come on so the left he had not much of anything the right i had maybe 1.5 in the expansion retraction nothing so again just a lot the the brain really stuck which makes sense in all of the other symptoms and diagnoses that he's had thus far um, I did check at the RCPM, the rectus capitis posterior minor, and that's where we're able to interface the dura through the musculature and a significant pull through the dura through that right side. However, I checked neural tension on everybody pre and post test. Neural tension didn't show up in slump sitting for him. So as we dive into the abdomen, we went into celiac plexus. That was priority for him. So celiac plexus, not in a state of balance. Then we went into ileocecal valve, ascending colon. Uh, and then we worked on celiac plexus relationship to ileocecal valve, some peritoneum. So from there, I retested craniosacral rhythm. Hey, how's that going? We're starting to get some expansion. Still having some trouble with retraction. So coming into the cranium, we're in the left temporal, which as I correlate this together just now, okay, so listening and my hands and end feel took me to that left temporal, which absolutely correlated with what he filled out on the symptom survey prior with. Um, and those, golly, temporal. Uh, temporal is group two on the symptom survey and it's memory problems, auditory visual processing, trouble finding words, mood instability, anxiety for no reason, difficult to diagnose headache or stomach pain, trouble reading facial expressions, hopeless thoughts, aggression towards self and others, learning problems, overly focused, heightened sensory perception, episodic rage, more severe form of temporal epilepsy, barely anybody fills that out, um, and religious preoccupation, preoccupation, occupation. Yes. So those are the symptoms that come in the temporal lobe group on this particular survey. So here I am up in the cranium. We're on that left side. So feeling, again, feeling the cranium, we know that we should have a springy end feel through the cranial bones. Taking that further in the tissue, springy end feel is healthy end feel versus a hard rigid end feel. So this whole left temporal region, there was just so much compression through the bone, into the dirt, into the tissue. So again, thinking about his prolonged labor, compression, compression, Again, just coming up with hypotheses for why. Why is there so much compression through this temporal lobe of his? So working to decompress, decompress the bone, the periosteum, the dura, the tissue through that region. I also wrote here the occiput needed counterclockwise. I'm trying to recall where I was sitting. Clockwise, counterclockwise. So I got one hand on the occiput, one hand on the temporal. And there's this need to go counterclockwise on the occiput. I believe probably an anterior anterior rotation of the temporals. I did wrote, right, that the temporals were, uh, there was a torsion of the temporals. So, and I didn't write what direction, but that's my assumption here with where my hands are going. And again, if we've got torsion on the temporals, how well is that brain tissue gonna work? How well, uh, again, the falx, the dura, we're absolutely gonna have tension on the soft tissue inside that bony 
cranium. So that was where we went. Um, that even took me into the maxilla, not quite into the zygoma, but probably just up in this region here. So again, temporal, so much compression. So the maxilla, as I come in, again, like I said, not so much zygoma, but upper maxilla needing decompression off the temporal bone. Again, thinking about all the sutures and where the cranial bones come together. Trigeminal, so also in the trigeminal. When I go into trigeminal, it tends to be a lighter palpation, a lighter listening, because it's more of a functional of that plexus. I'm still learning. Again, grateful for Garrett, for all of his work he's doing in trigeminal, because trigeminal shows up a lot in my patients um, post-brain injury, uh, tinnitus, and uh, the relationship of that to vagus nerve. So I absolutely need to dive into that anatomy and Garrett's wisdom there. So um, worked on that region, a lot of decompression through the left side of the temporal the maxilla in the occiput to open up that region and give it some space. So again, retesting, improving expansion of, uh, of the cranial cycle rhythm, finally getting some retraction. So again, when we think of retraction, we think of how well can fluids come out of the brain as well. So I was thrilled, again, pre-test, post-test, how I was able to feel a change in that cranial cycle rhythm after, first off, the gut treatment, cranial sacral rhythm responded, and then direct cranium treatment further enhanced the vitality, the symmetry, the robustness, and the speed of that cranial sacral rhythm. So um, I went in and then retested. Um, again, neural tension didn't show up, so I didn't retest that, but uh, I, did, I went and retested uh, eye tracking and smoother. So we still have some work to do, but again, smoother. So eyes were more connective as we went up, went down, side to side. So I was pleased with a change. I probably should have videoed pre and post, but then we'd have lots of videos, but I was improved. I was pleased with the improvement I saw in his eye tracking. And again, I will absolutely retest all of those things beginning of next session to see how well did he keep those things. The other thing I just wanted to note is as he was on the table, just how alert his eyes, always looking around, always starting around. And again, ANS didn't show up at this particular session as far as vagus nerve as a primary, although celiac, right, celiac plexus, where uh, sympathetic meets the parasympathetic did show up. So, but what I had noticed throughout the treatment is those eyes started to settle down. So again, as we're working the gut, as we're working the brain, as we're working sympathetic, parasympathetic, that sympathetic, that eye alertness was able to settle and calm a little bit as well. So his mom came in two days later, big hug. Oh my gosh, Jen, he just had a couple days where he wasn't so angry and so volatile as he had. So thank you, Joe, for putting the call out to share our Victory Fridays. And every single patient is a case study for us. I have so many more and I know you have so many more as well. So type it up or just share it. I feel like for me, they're all stories. So it's easier for me to just tell my patient's story for you. And then we can put it into words from there. All right. Keep on keeping on. Keep up the good work.